Hi and welcome to today's video. I'm going to share today another page for my Year in Flowers Dickbound journal. So I have made some of the pages for some of the letters in the alphabet and today I'm going to work for the letter C. This is a new stamp set that has just been released by Altenew. It's one of their Build a Flower collections and it is the Crocus Flower. It's one of these layering stamp sets when, where you stamp one on top of the other to get that beautiful shading that brings uh, the flower to life. And I love the size because they make great focal points for both cards and scrapbooking. However, today I'm going for a mixed media project. First, I'm going to work on my background. This is a mixed media paper by Ranger and I will apply acrylic paints on my gel plate. You can use any acrylic paints that you have at home. I'm going with my new Arteza set just because I love how they work on top of a gel plate. They give beautiful prints and I have a huge range of colors. I did use them in my previous video and I do have a 10% coupon code down below. I'm going to apply two colors. This is sky blue and I'm going to bring in titanium white. Both of these colors are opaque and you can see that with a little black square at the packaging of these paints. In gel printing, opacity of a paint is really important because you pull prints one on top of the other, different layers one on top of the other, and if the paints are transparent, then you will end up with mud because all the colors are going to blend together, layer upon layer. So it is important to know when you apply a transparent layer or when you apply an opaque layer. Pulling a print and uh, looking at the result is always uh, something special, it is a surprise, but you can still control how it's going to look pretty much if you know the attributes of the paint that you're using. Now here I went with cobalt blue, I didn't apply it all over the blade, just in some areas and then applied on top my stencil, just to get some interesting results. And of course you can pull more prints so nothing goes to waste. Now for the last layer on my background, I'm working with white and violet. I'm going to mix up those colors directly on my gel plate. I'm going to spread it out with my brayer and with a scrap paper, I'm going to pick up most of it because I want to have a more grungy look on my main background. So here I'm going to pull in some areas so that they are darker and lighter areas on my background, which is something that I always like. I think it gives more depth and interest on my background. One of the most fun things about our journaling is the different layers that you can add as well as the different textures. So here I am applying uh, some embossing paste and with my spatula over a stencil. This is a text stencil that I had for ages. I don't know if it is still available. If it is, you will find it linked down below, just like always. I'm going to peel off the stencil and you can see the background that I end up having. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so I'm going to put it aside to dry and I'm going to work on my focal points. Now, for the focal points, I want to create my own colored cardstock that has the same look and feel as the background. So I'm going to create a colored cardstock for the leaves. For that, I'm going with a yellow green, which I'm mixing with a dot of white just to lighten it up a little bit more. I'm going to spread it out and just pull a print. Super easy and you will see that I don't end up with a completely flat color, which is exactly what I want for my mixed media projects. Crocus flowers are usually violet or uh, yellow, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm mixing up mauve pale with white to create another background. I'm just going to pull a print again. And by the way, I'm always working with mixed media paper by Ranger. I love how smooth it is and how lovely it picks up all the details from the gel plate. And here I am creating my yellow background. This time I'm using mid yellow and white, spread it out with my brayer and pull a print. And when I pull the print here, you will see that it looks quite dark, but in comparison to the rest of the colors that I have already on my page, you will see that it will end up looking quite bright. Now it's time to create my focal points. Here I'm doing some stamping with the second layer of the leaves the one that adds the shading, which I'm just stamping directly on the pattern paper that I have created. Now, you can use either the matching dies to cut these out, or you can use your scissors. I'm going to need loads of these for my page, so I'll keep on stamping until I have enough. Also notice that today I'm not working with black lines at all, so I don't have any black lines surrounding my designs here. I can easily use the matching dies to cut them out, 
everything is already green and I will not end up with that sticker look which I don't like for my art journal pages. So now for the flowers I omit the first layer since I already have color on my background. So I'm stopping here the second layer a couple of times to get a good impression. I end up having a lovely shadow that really brings the flowers to life. And for the third layer I used an even darker ink. The darker you go the better the flower is going to look. It Really the darker shadows bring uh, objects to life. And you can see here that I have already cut out all the leaves and my purple flowers and I'm going uh, to cut out the yellow flowers as well, securing the dies with some purple tape. I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine and now I have all the elements ready to go. Today's letter is C for Crocus and I'm going to cut it out from black cardstock. Here is another go-to technique. I am using uh, some corrugated cardstock which I'm going to stick at the very bottom of my page. This is going to provide some kind of a ground where I can stick all the flowers on top. I love the color and I love the texture that it adds on my pages and I keep going back to this technique again and again. I'm also going to do some dry brushing. I have some gesso here which I'm not going to dilute with water. My brush is completely dry. By adding those highlights, it's going to bring the texture into the fore foreground even more. And in some areas, I'm going to add even more white so that it doesn't look perfect. Now it's time to create my flower composition. For that, I'm going to play a little bit with where I want everything to go before I commit and stick everything down with glue. And that's exactly what I love about creating my focal points in a different paper and then putting everything together. If you don't like a focal point or how a color looks on top of your background, you can always make another one. You can play around with the composition. So once I'm happy with the placement and I feel that they are pleasing to the eye, I'm just going to stick everything down. With a white marker, I'm going to add some highlights. I don't want them to be very harsh, so I'm just blending them out with my finger. I feel like uh, shadows and highlights really bring the elements into life. And for example, compare the yellow flower here with the highlights with the yellow flower that doesn't have. You can see the huge difference. In the stamp set, there is a little stamp for the center of these flowers. Here I decided to go with uh, Nouveau Drops. And I'm also going to bring some big brush markers to do some shading at the base of the flowers as well as at the base of all the leaves. Now, usually when I do this technique, I always apply matte medium over my elements so that I can have some more uh, time to smudge the ink around. However, with these Arteza acrylic paints, I find that they turn the paper into a non-porous surface so it doesn't absorb the ink instantly and I have a few seconds to smudge the ink with my finger before it uh, dries permanently. And don't ask me why, I just find it satisfying to add the white splashes. This is gesso diluted with water. I'm applying it over the flowers and over the background. I don't care where those splashes are going to fall. And for all the pages in my Year in Flowers art journal, I do have um, the definition of the flower. I just go online and print it out on some printer paper. Here I have placed it on uh, a black cardstock. And I don't like how bright white this looks, so I'm going to ink it up and stick it directly on top of my page. And here is where I made a mistake. Always do the punching before you do anything on your page. Here I had lots of layers, one on top of the other, and it wouldn't fit my punch. So for that area there, I need to make a, a hole with my scissors. And that's what I'm going to do. And for the little uh, semicircle at the top, I'm just going to use my Gropa tile to create a little circle. If you don't have one of the 6x6 disc bound journals, don't forget to do the punching before you start working on your project, otherwise you might end up with problems like me. You can see everything worked fine at the end, but um, <laughs> I managed to have a hack here. So you can see if you don't have a punch, all you need to do is to create some circles with a crop dial. Of course you need to measure, I'm not measuring here, I'm just showing you how you can do it. And then with your scissors just cut out a couple of slits. 
So that was the project for today featuring the Krogus Build the Flower stamp set by Altenew. And since you stayed all the way to the end, I need to let you know that there is a giveaway on my blog, make sure to visit. This is part of a blog hop with lots of inspiration and tons of giveaways. I hope you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave me a comment. Thank you all so much for watching and have a lovely weekend.